Welcome to the printmaking studio here at Hollins. I'm um, Associate Professor Jennifer D. Anderson, um, and I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about the 175th print um, that I've been working on. Back in the spring, um, the idea came out to do a print uh, to honor the 175th anniversary. Uh, and in particular, to think about the idea of a print about Tinker Mountain, since that's part of our campus and our culture here at Hollins that we all love so dearly. Um, so that began, whenever I start to make a print, I always start with drawing. Um, so I actually have one of the pieces of tracing paper right here in front of me that I started drawing on, playing around with the silhouette of Tinker Mountain, and this kind of idea of the sky with a pattern. I've been working in my work for um, a while now, thinking about what holds up the sky, the structure of the universe. So I thought this was a fun thing to play with for this print. Um, and so in particular, I started thinking about um, the dome of heaven, the glass ceiling, and since it's Hollands and it's the idea of scaling up Tinker Mountains, that we're actually puncturing and working through um, that ceiling. So you'll see in my drawing and in the prints um, that I've actually kind of opened up that pattern as if we're looking through holes um, to the beautiful sky above. So once I had that drawing done, I actually transferred it to um, a piece of um, nice solid cabinet grade plywood. Um, we always stain it red, so when I start to carve, I can actually see the areas that I've carved. For this print, which is called a relief print or a woodcut, I just meticulously carved all of the areas that I want to remain white in the print. The other areas um, where I leave the wood will actually take ink um, and print. So this is a really antique, old printmaking process. We have examples going back to zero AD of um, woodcuts from China. Um, but it's still very contemporary and a lot of artists do it. And if you think about it, it's very similar to um, a rubber stamp, if you've ever used one of those. The high areas will take ink. These recessed areas that I'm carving away um, won't. So once I finished carving the block, then it was ready to ink um, and proof. So here you'll see one of my proofs for the print in the shape of Tinker Mountain and the coffered ceiling. I'm actually printing these on top of uh, an archival inkjet that I took of different views of the sky here in Roanoke. So here we are at the inking slabs and I've got my two sections of the block. Here's Tinker Mountain, here's my sky pattern. And so now I'm gonna go through the process of inking these up. Um, the ink that I use is a really thick oil-based ink. So maybe a little different than what you think about when you think of ink. Okay. Um, so I apply that with a brayer or a roller by first rolling it out on the slab. And printmakers, we like to listen for that very subtle sound referred to as the hiss of the ink. And then this goes right on top to apply that ink. And I'll typically go, for this one anyway, in a couple of different directions. So that way I make sure I get a nice, even general coverage. Then for the sky, I have an effect here referred to as a rainbow roll or splint font. Some people would say ombre as one color fades into the other. Um, so for this, I use a really large roller and kind of work it back and forth so I get that beautiful blend effect right in the middle. And then once I have the ink on there, I'll do the same thing, just roll right on top. And you can see where it'll pick up the pattern. So then I need to apply more ink. So it becomes very methodical for each print, and I do have to do this for every print of applying some ink, coming back to the slab, and recharging. So we're here at the, the press now. Um, this Conrad Press has been at Hollands for a while. And it's technology that goes back oh, about three or 400 years. It hasn't changed. So I've got the block on the press bed, ink side up, and I have my registration guide here. 
so that every time I pull an impression, I can line the paper up in exactly the same place. I'm doing what's referred to as a bleed print, which means the ink goes all the way through the edges of the paper. You can call it, think of the ink actually bleeding off the paper. So I put a piece of paper behind, so when I run this through the press, I don't get ink all over the rollers. Okay. And I just run through nice and slow. Put this out of the way. I'll actually let these dry and reuse them several times here in the shop. And then I'll actually do what's referred to as pulling the print. So taking the paper off the block. And here we go. Here's our impression. And now I'll ink again and just keep going. So here we are with the addition as it keeps going. Um, so come Tinker Day. These will be for sale here through the Hollands Bookstore as part of our celebration. So each one will be for sale for $175. So you can have Tinker Mountain in your home.